We're going to be taking our text uh, from 2 Chronicles 29, and I'm going to do something I don't do. Normally, I'll read to you one verse, and that's all I'm preaching on, because I can spend about two days on one word at times. So, so uh, but I'm going to do something I don't normally do. I'm going to read a little bit of scripture, and I want you to just focus with me, because there's a story here. Uh, there's a process here that we need to see and that we need to be working in our lives. And, and I want us to see that. So Second Chronicles chapter 1, Hezekiah began to reign when he was 5 and 20 years old. And he reigned 9 and 20 years in Jerusalem. And his mother's name was Abijah, the daughter of Zechariah. And he did that which was right in the sight of the Lord, according to all that David, his father, had done. He, in the first year of his reign, in the first month, opened the doors to the house of the Lord and repaired them. And he brought in priests and Levites and gathered them together in the east street and said unto them, Hear me, ye Levites, sanctify now yourselves and sanctify the house of the Lord. God of our fathers and carry forth the filthiness out of the holy place. We need some filthiness carried out. Amen. Amen. Well, I know that's not a shouting point, but it can be a shouting point because it means that the filthiness can get out of there. Amen. So that is a shouting point. All right. Now we're going to skip ahead to verse 16. And the priests went in to the inner part of the house of the Lord to cleanse it and brought out all the uncleanness that they found in the temple of the Lord into the court of the house of the Lord. And the Levites took it and carried it abroad into the brook Kidron. Skipping ahead to verse 21. And they brought seven bullocks, seven rams, seven lambs, seven he goats for a sin offering for the kingdom and for the sanctuary and for Judah. And he commanded the priests, the sons of Aaron, to offer them on the altar of the Lord. So they killed the bullocks and the priests received the blood and sprinkled it on the altar. Likewise, when they killed the rams, they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. They killed also the lambs and they sprinkled the blood upon the altar. And they brought forth the he goats for a sin offering before the king and the congregation. And they laid their hands upon them. And the priests killed them and they made reconciliation with their blood upon the altar to make an atonement for Israel. For the king commanded that the burnt offering and the sin offering should be made for Israel. So now we're getting our object of faith right. Right? Verse 25, skipping ahead. And he set the Levites in the house of the Lord with <laughs> cymbals, with psalteries, and with harps, according to the commandment of David and Gad the king seer and Nathan, Nathan the prophet, for so was the commandment of the Lord by his prophets. And the Levites stood with the instruments of David and the priests with the trumpets. And Hezekiah commanded to offer the burnt offering upon the altar. And when the burnt offering began, listen, the song of the Lord began. That's powerful. When that burnt offering began, a type of what Christ would do at the cross, the song of the Lord began. My God. That gets me happy. All right. So uh, and, and the Lord, the song of the Lord began also with the trumpets and with the instruments ordained by David, king of Israel and all the congregation worshiped and the singers sang the trumpeteers sounded and all of this continued until the burnt offering was finished. And when they had made an end of offering, the king and all that were present with him bowed themselves and worshiped. Moreover, Hezekiah, the king and the princes commanded the Levite to sing praise unto the Lord with the words of David, Asaph, the, singer, the seer, and they sang praises with gladness and they bowed their heads and worshiped. Today, what I've come to talk to you about is simply this. When the spirit of God is having freedom to move and to work in your heart and in your life and in your spirit. There is a song of praise burning, that is burning on the inside of you. And that's simply what I've come to talk about today. You know, a lot of the church today, they're walking around in misery, in defeat, and in destruction. And they don't have much of a song to sing. But for those of you and for those of us who know how the Holy Spirit works, 
regarding sanctification in our daily lives, there is a joy. There should be a joy. There should be an expectancy. And there should be a song of praise swelling on the inside of you. And listen to me. If that song of praise isn't there, that's a good time for us to look and, and to inspect ourselves. Are we walking according to the prescribed order of God's victory? Are we living in the realm of the Spirit? Are we walking in the realm of the Spirit? Are we living according to faith in what Christ has done for us at Calvary? You say, oh, those terms are just monotonous, Paris. We hear people say that every day. You need to hear it again. Amen. You need to hear it again. And you need to hear it again. Because you know what we do easily? We forget. Amen. But when we need to hear this again. And we need to let this, this get into our spirits. And as it begins to work, I promise you, there's going to be a shout of praise on the inside of you. So I've come to preach to you a message today. Restoring the temple of praise. Heavenly Father, we come to you today, Lord, in the name of Jesus. And we thank you for everything that you've done for us at Calvary. Lord, we thank you for the blood of your son, Jesus Christ. We thank you, Lord, for everything that you've made available in that new covenant. And God, I thank you for these people. I'm asking you right now that you would begin to move upon their hearts, Lord. That you would begin to deal with them, God. That you would begin to give them a spirit of wisdom. Give us a spirit of revelation and the knowledge of the Lord Jesus Christ. Open our eyes, Lord, and help us to see what you have done at Calvary. Clearly, Lord, remove any specks that might not help us to see clearly. Lord, remove the veil that's covering that finished work. Remove some of that glass that's darkened, Lord, and let us see clearly what you've done for us at Calvary. And Lord, let a song of praise rise up within us. Let a song of joy, a song of jubilee, let it rise up within us. Because we know that we know that we know that your spirit is a work and alive within us, Lord. And we give you thanks tonight, today. And we give you praise. And we say it in Jesus' name. Amen, amen. and amen. amen. In verse 28, we see a completely different picture then what we see in verse 20, in chapter, I'm sorry, I say verse, chapter 28, we see a completely different picture than what we see in chapter 29. There's a lot to go through. We're not going to go through it all. But this is what you need to know. Ahaz, Hezekiah's father, was the king. And in, if any of you have read through the Old Testament, you know, you remember that name Ahaz. Because that was a wicked king. He was an evil king. And the most evil and the most wicked thing that he did was to shut the doors of the house of the Lord. And today what I want us to do, and I know that at times, and, and I've done this in the past, and I've looked at the temple, and I've thought of it as a place where I go to meet with God. But I want us to look at the temple today as Paul told us to look at the temple in the New Testament. I want us to look at the temple today as us. Know ye not that the Spirit of God dwells in you, you are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So the New Testament in, uh, I believe it's 2 Corinthians chapter 3, or is it 1 Corinthians chapter 3? One of the two. Verse 16 says that you and I are the temple of the Holy Spirit. So uh, right now for this, for this moment, I want us to look at this temple as us. You see, we've been shut off Due to the reign of Ahaz over our lives, and Ahaz is a type of the sin nature. Due to the reign of Ahaz in our lives, the temple has been broken down. The temple has been shut down. The temple is not performing its daily functions as it's supposed to because we have to remember that there was only one place for the Spirit of God to dwell under the terms of the Old Covenant. One place. He could not officially live over uh, day by day within the heart of the, of the man of God and the woman of God. Not day by day. Now he could come in and do a work and leave, but he could not abide. He could not dwell. The Spirit of God was confined to the temple 
And today, the same is true. If the Spirit of God is going to live anywhere today under the terms of the new covenant, it will be within the very confines of your heart. That's where the Lord lives today. We think we come to church to meet with the presence of God. We don't come to church to meet with the presence of God. I wake up in the morning in the presence of God. I go to bed at night in the presence of God. When I'm eating lunch at work, I'm in the presence of God. Why? Because He lives in me. Hey! Now that makes me shout. The Spirit of God lives in you. The Spirit of God lives in me. But under Ahaz, the house of the Lord had been shut. Daily service to the temple had been closed down. There were no priests at work as they should be. The altar of incense had quit smoking. The lamp in the house of God had been put out. There was no one to trim the wick. No one to carry away the wax. Sacrifices had been stopped regarding the temple. The only place where a sacrifice was to ever be offered under the terms of the old covenant was right in front of the temple. Because you have to go through the blood to get into the presence of God. So that the sacrifice had been shut down. The temple had been closed down. Priestly service had been rendered ineffective. No longer working. And I want us to think today of the priests as a type of the Holy Spirit. Right? Jesus Christ is our high priest. Right? So as Jesus Christ is our high priest, the Holy Spirit is the Spirit of Christ. And you want to look at the, the, the majority of the uses of the term Spirit in the, new, in the New Covenant, in the New Testament, is Holy Spirit. Amen. Why? Why is that? Because the Holy Spirit comes to produce holiness in the individual. The Holy Spirit has come, yes, to give you power, yes, to help you in your daily life as it regards to witness for Him, but I think what we need to understand and what God is emphasizing in this last day is that the Holy Spirit has come to change you. The Holy Spirit has come to deal with the corruption within my heart and in my life. That's what the Holy Spirit has come to deal with today. That's his that's what he's doing. I mean, if he's doing anything, he's more than I'm ever going to preach. I'm going to be changed. More than I'll ever have an opportunity to stand up and to preach to you or to teach to you or to sing to you. I'm going to be being changed because I can't stand up here 24 hours a day. There's only two I know of that is going to do something like that. And I don't even know what that's going to be like. They're the, the prophets that will come in the, uh, in the uh, right before, during the uh, uh, tribulation period. There we go. They might prophesy for 24 hours every day, but I can't do that. See, but what I can do all day, every day is be changed. Let the spirit work inside of me and produce a righteous life. Well, we're, the, the Spirit of God is that one that's come to do that work. That's the priest that's come to, do, to give attendance to the daily service of the temple. But under the reign of Ahaz, the sin nature, the Holy Spirit couldn't do that. The house of the, 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 house of the Lord had been shut off. The presence of God was not welcomed there. So there was no work of the Spirit being done at that time. And we have been subject now to because of doing this and now exalting altars all through Jerusalem, worshiping foreign gods, sending our children as sacrifices. And don't tell me that we're not doing that today. Oh yeah, we're offering up our children as sacrifices to heathen gods of psychology, to heathen gods of worldliness, and to heathen gods of the powers of darkness. We're doing that today because we're not preaching to them what will only help them. Last night I watched, as we had about 100 people there last night, and I watched young people from ages, I think, uh, maybe 10 to in their 30s and 40s. Sat there in the presence of God for two hours and 
they did not, they did not get bored. They were not, uh, not interested. They were focused. They were intent. And their hands were lifted. And they were worshiping God. That was proof to me last night. That I don't need to entertain young people. I don't need to entertain them. I don't have to entertain them. Because the presence of God can get a hold of them. Amen. Young people, they don't need the entertainment. They've been entertained to death. And they have entertainment surrounding them all day, every day. What they need when they come into the house of God is to feel and to sense the presence of an almighty God. Amen. That's what we need. But we're worshiping gods in high places, sending our children through strange fire, offering them up as sacrifices. And now we've got foreign invaders coming into the land under Ahaz's reign. Foreign invaders came in and they were invading our land. And now we're being carried away captive because we've shut the house, shut the doors to the house of the Lord. You know that there were many times in the Old Testament where it says that a king walked uprightly even though he did not take away the high places because he was still allowing worship, true worship in the temple. Even though he didn't take away the high places, God still respected him and still honored him because he kept the service to the temple going. <clears throat> But when you shut the door to the temple, and that's what happens, that's what happened to us when we fell. And the very, oh, I love this. <laughs> I love it. Because after it talks about all of this turmoil, in verse 27 of chapter 8, it says, And Ahaz slept with his fathers. Glory to God. You want to know what that means? He died. Thank God. Ahaz is dead. Oh, yeah, that excites me. I'm glad Ahaz is dead because now we've got some hope. Maybe this next king is going to step up and do something right for us. Maybe this next king is going to rise up and he's going to do something good for us because what we had under Ahaz, I don't want no more of that. I'm tired of what Ahaz has allowed to happen in my life. You see, that's what happened to me when I was sitting in my dorm room. And I was sitting in my dorm room and I was drunk and I was sick and tired of the way my life was going. And the Lord showed up and told me, that's because you're living in sin. I was sick and tired of the reign of Ahaz. And when I asked Jesus into my heart, he put Ahaz to death. And he raised up a new king to live and to dwell and to reign from the throne of my heart. Glory to God. Ahaz is king. Ahaz is king. I'm, I'm sorry. Hezekiah is king. That's better, right? <laughs> That's better. But more importantly, Jesus is king. Amen. Jesus is reigning on the throne of our hearts. Jesus is the king. Glory to God. Ahaz is dead. Hezekiah is reigning. And watch what he does in the first month of his reign. He opens the door to the temple. That's what we needed God to do. To open the door. What is a door? It's a point of access. It's a point where you and I can access the presence of God. In Romans 4 and 24 it says, But for, uh, for us also to whom it shall be imputed if we believe on Him that raised up Jesus our Lord from the dead who was delivered for our offenses and was raised again for our justification. Therefore being justified by faith we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ by whom also we have access. Jesus isn't just king. Now I have some access. See, he could have saved me. He could have made himself my Lord and left it at that. But he didn't. But he didn't. No, he opened up an effectual door for you to walk through into all the fullness that he has made available through what he did at Calvary. You have access into this grace wherein we stand. And when we're in this grace wherein we stand, look at what we do. Rejoice in hope of the glory of God. You see, we, I'm just more proof. When we are walking in the power of the Spirit, there is a reason to rejoice. There is a reason for a shout to rise up within us. Glory to God. 
You have access today. My God. And how many of us are availing ourselves to that? Do you know what you have available to you? How many? Oh, we won't go there. I won't step on toes this morning. You don't have to raise your hands. But how many of you avail yourselves to a prayer life daily? You don't have to raise your hands. Please don't. You have access, my friends. Access to the presence of God. Access to a throne of grace. My, the Creator. You have access to the Creator. Yes. You've got some needs today. Yes. And those needs, there's no provision in existence. So you need someone to come along and to create some provision for that need that you have. Amen? Amen. Amen. He can create. If it doesn't exist and you need it, He can create it for you. Hallelujah. Are you accessing that today? Are you taking advantage of what you have today? You know, what, when Jesus told us to pray, He said, Our Father who, are, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. And His name spoke of His covenant. When He said that, hallow that name, it spoke of His covenant. Jesus Christ is the covenant that God cut with humanity. He cut covenant on the cross of Calvary with us. Now, as we hallow that name, we are thanking him for that covenant that he cut with us at Calvary. Hallow his name. You know what you have in Jesus? You have righteousness. You know what you have in Jesus? Victory over sin. He's Jehovah Sidkenu, the Lord God, your righteousness. He's Jehovah Makedesh, the Lord God, your sanctification. He is Jehovah uh, Shalom, the Lord God, your peace. He is Jehovah Shammah. He's the ever present one. He's the Lord God who has covenanted Himself to you to always be with you. <laughs> he is Jehovah Rapha. Do you need healing today? Because in His covenant is healing. He's your healer. He's Jehovah Jireh. Do you need something from Him today? Because He's covenanted Himself with you to give you what you need. Amen. My God. He is Jehovah Nisi. He is the Lord God, your banner. Your banner. And do you want to know what His banner over you is today? In, in uh, the Psalms of Solomon, it says that His banner over me is love. Love. And love never fails. Hallelujah. He showed me His love at Calvary. And it's never failed me yet. He's your victory. He's Jehovah Nisi, your banner of love, your victory. And He is Jehovah Rohi. He is the Lord God, your shepherd. Amen. For the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. Amen. He causes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. Mm. How many of you need a shepherd today? Amen. How many of you need a shepherd to cause you to lie down and give you rest? <laughs> to, lead you to, buy, to lead you to some water because you're dry and thirsty? Yeah. How many of you need some provision today? Because He's with you as you walk through the valley of the shadow of death. And always remember, it's only the shadow. It's not the substance of death. But He's with you. He's with you. His rod and His staff, they comfort you. It's, your, it's His covenant. This is His covenant to always be there to comfort me, to always be there to save me and to protect me with that rod and with that staff. That's His covenant. It's what He's guaranteed through what He did at Calvary. It's not, it's not something that might happen. It's something that did happen. The covenant is not something that might give us something. It's something that did give us something. My God, we just need to access it. We just need to walk through the door. Thank God Jesus repaired the door. Thank God He opened the way into the presence of God again. But we've got to walk through by faith. We've got to go through. And I'm asking you this morning, what I'm going to ask you this morning is to just go through that door. Don't live in doubt any longer. That door has been opened. That way has been made. Stop standing on the outside and get into all that He's got for you. Don't stay on the outside when you can have everything that He's made available for you. My God, get into His presence. Get into His presence. Walk through those doors. You have access 
by grace. He's made a way. He's made a way. He's made a way. He's made a way. And I love, I love what he did next. And right now we've got to understand that the message of the cross is what is opening that door. <coughs> See, because you and I, we've come under the reign of Hezekiah. But if we put our faith in looking at Hezekiah, as, uh, looking at Ahaz as the sin nature, if we put our faith in the law again, and we start to live and operate in the flesh again, then Ahaz rises from the dead. You thought Ahaz was dead forever. Some of us thought when we got saved, man, I'll never sin again. <laughs> oh, but then that person cut you off in traffic and here comes that four letter word that you didn't think was in there anymore, but it's there. Huh? You are laughing because you know it's true. Just look for the ones laughing, guys. They ain't mine. No, it's just <laughs> uh, Then all of a sudden, something happens and there it is again. What do you do with that? So that's where the message of the cross comes in. When I fail, what do I do with my failure? What do I do with it? Where do I take it? Do I take it to the flesh? Oh, I'm going to go to church and I'm going to get over this thing. I'm going to, oh man, I'm going to read 25 chapters in this Bible today. Nobody can stop me. You get 25 verses in and you're done. Huh? It's a flesh. And the flesh is believing and trusting in your own ability to take care of that oops that just happened when they cut you off. Right? The, how do we deal with that? So they, we, we start to walk in the flesh again. And listen, the, uh, the wages of sin is death. The strength of sin is the law. So we give Ahaz his power back. And what's happening now that we've given him his power back? The He's shutting the door. The presence of God's not flowing in the temple like it's supposed to. The priests that Hezekiah told to go in to cleanse, they're not able to get inside anymore. Now, does that mean that the Lord leaves us and that He gives up on us? No. But He is quenched. I do not, Paul said, I do not frustrate the grace of God. It literally means to take the grace of God and to kink it. Like a water hose. I don't kink the flow of the Holy Spirit in my heart and in my life by coming back under the law. For if righteousness came by the law, then Christ is dead in vain. And when that gets quenched, the sin nature gets its power back. So now I've been trying, I've, I've thought that I could take care of this thing with the law of the mind, which is the law of desire and willpower. I thought within my own strength, I could handle this issue. But now not only am I trying to do it in my own strength, but I'm literally being dominated by a stronger power, the sin nature, the law of sin and death. See, because there was another law that brought the law of my mind into captivity, Romans chapter 7, to the law of sin and death. Ahaz is reigning again. It's not just that I don't have the power to do it. It's now I've got a power that's influencing me not to do it and keeping me from doing it and not allowing me to do it. Because he is stronger than me, more powerful than I am. Ahaz is alive again. But I, I'm not, and Paul said that those that are in the flesh, Romans 8, 8, they cannot please God, Romans 8, 9, but you are not in the flesh. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not in the flesh. If you've been born again, you were baptized into Christ. You've been baptized into his death. You are buried with him by baptism into death. And you've been raised up with him. Just as he was raised from the dead. You now too can walk in a newness of life. A life you've never known. A life you've never experienced. And if you are in Christ... You are in the spirit for the spirit, the law of the spirit of life in Christ Jesus. Hello. 
If you're in Christ, you are in the Spirit. But here's the problem. You don't know that. You don't know that. So you start depending on the flesh. But you're in the Spirit. You're in Christ. You're not, you're not lost. You're not, you don't need to get born again again. You've not separated yourselves from God altogether. But you're, 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 you're trying to live for God in the flesh. But you're not in the flesh anymore. You're not in the flesh anymore. We need to get this. This is what we need to know. I'm not in the flesh. I don't have to depend on me, my willpower, my own strength, my own ability. Now I can live and rest and depend upon the Spirit. You are not in the flesh, but you are in the Spirit. I'm trying to get, I want to get to that. I want to read that. Romans chapter 8. It says, but you are not in the flesh, but in the spirit. If so, be that the spirit of God dwells in you. This is what you need to know. Listen, guys. And this is what Hezekiah was doing when he said, I'm not just opening up the house of the Lord. I'm going to send someone in there to fix it. Hey, I'm going to send somebody in there to get it straight. I'm going to send somebody in there to get everything right, to make everything look good, to make everything sound better, to make everything flow better. Because with all that corruption from Ahab, the, the, the treasuries of the house of the Lord have been corrupted and even carried out. But now Hezekiah says, I'm not just going to open the door, but I'm going to send somebody in there to fix it. I'm going to send somebody in there to work on it. So the Spirit of God, oh, verse 8, if so be that the Spirit of God dwells in you. He's not asking a question. He's trying to let you know the Spirit of God dwells in you. You're not in the flesh. You're in the Spirit. And the Spirit of God dwells in you. If, if the Spirit of God doesn't dwell in you, then you're none of His. But in verse 10 it says, And if Christ be in you, watch this. If Christ be in you, the body is dead because of sin. But Christ is in me. How is the body dead? You in this mortal body. Look, in Romans chapter 6, he says that as you have yielded your members as servants unto uncleanness from iniquity to iniquity, even so now yield your members to, as servants to righteousness, listen, unto holiness. Yield yourself servants to righteousness unto holiness. Because it's only by yielding our members to righteousness. And what's righteousness? Jesus. What Jesus did at the cross. That's, right. That's righteousness. For he who knew no sin became a sin offering for me that I might be called the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. So yield your members to the finished work of Calvary by faith. And that in turn will produce Holiness, But I've just found out that my body is dead. And it's my members, my, my, where, what I'm doing, where I'm going, what I'm looking at. My members. I'm yielding my members to the finished work of Calvary. But a, the problem is, is the body's dead. This physical body is so corrupted by the fall, by the reign of Ahaz, I need someone else to do the work. Here's the answer. But the Spirit, and properly in the Greek, is alive. Is alive because of righteousness. Now that the door has been opened, Hezekiah can send some living priests into that temple to cleanse it. See, your door was open, and remember, we're the temple. So now God has access to me again. Hallelujah. Amen. You know, we think that the greatest thing in the world is that we got access to God, but let me tell you something it's the exact opposite. It's that by the cross, God gained access to you because I need Him more than He needs me. I need Him more than He needs me. But He wanted me. And He loved me. And He gave Himself for me. He cared for me. Now I have Him. Glory to God. I have access to Him. And now there's a living priest. His name is Jesus Christ. And the person of His Spirit. To do the work in the temple. 
Glory to God. The Spirit is alive because of righteousness. Listen. Look at the next verse. And if Christ be in you, I'm sorry, but if the spirit of him that raised up Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he that raised up Christ from the dead shall also quicken those dead members, the mortal body. I don't have any control of what my body does under the reign of Ahaz. I don't have any control of what my body does under the reign of Paris. Because I don't have any power to tell it what to do. None that will work. But when I surrender myself to Jesus. And I put my faith and my trust in His finished work at Calvary. I now have access to the quickening power of the Holy Spirit. And now I can yield those members to holiness. Holiness is now being produced in my life. Galatians 5 and 24 says, it says that they that are Christ have crucified the flesh with the affections and the lust. I still have affections. I still have lust, but I don't have to answer them. I don't have to submit to those things anymore. I don't have to be corrupted by the sin nature anymore. I don't have to yield myself to the flesh anymore. I can walk in the power of the Spirit because there's a living priest on the inside of me. The Spirit of God dwells in you and He gives you victory over that dead area in your life. Each and every one of us in here right now, we have something in our lives that is dead, it's rotten, and it stinks, and we know it. But I want you to get this today. You've thought for the longest time that there could never be victory in that area of my life. Well, is it a fact that Jesus Christ was raised from the dead? Is that a fact? See, because and there's a preacher, Brother Larson quotes this all the time, and I have a hard time not sharing it. You ain't got no problem that's greater than dead and buried. I said, I want you to hear it again. You don't have a problem in your life that's greater than dead and buried. And Jesus conquered the dead and the buried. Glory to God. He got up. He got up. He was raised from the dead on the third day. We're about to celebrate it. Resurrection Sunday's coming. Hey, your resurrection Sunday's coming. That dead area in your life that you thought there's no way I'll ever have victory. He's about to raise you up. He's about to raise you up. (laughs) Because there is a living priest on the inside of you. His name is Jesus. (laughs) You got a living priest living on the inside of you and just to cut things, move ahead. Now that I have that living priest working on the inside of me and I'm getting my object of faith right because I'm cleansing everything and now we're bringing sacrifices in to atone for our sin. He's getting, he's not just cleaning me up, but he's directing my focus back on the finished work of Calvary. See, the Spirit's not there just to help me just to help me get clean. But He's there to keep my focus on what Christ did at the cross so that He can keep working. Because He wants to keep working. But if sacrifices stop, He must stop. If you stop focusing on the cross of Calvary as your object of faith, He is limited to what He can do. Because you're you're frustrating the grace of God. But, Now that that is flowing in the temple, we're being cleaned up. The object of our faith is right. It's correct. Now the king is setting up some Levites and some priests (laughs) with some cymbals, with some harps, with some psalteries. Huh? I love what we, you know, I was thinking about this while I was preparing. You know, we call our singers, our band and our choir, resurrection band, resurrection singers, resurrection choirs. And how many of you love to listen to some family worship center music? It's good, right? Some good music. They're great. But there ain't nothing like that band that God has set up inside of my heart. (laughs) A resurrection 
band might be good. That resurrection, those resurrection singers are great. And that resurrection choir can't be matched. But there ain't no band like the band of the Holy Spirit that God's erected inside of me because I'm being cleaned up, because I'm being, listen, and this was the Levites and the priests. Remember, type of the Holy Spirit? So that means that the Holy Spirit's not just inside of me just to clean me up, just to get my object of faith right, but He's singing a song, glory to God. He's giving God glory and worship. The spirit of adoption has entered into your heart, crying out, Abba. Father, that is intimate worship. That is intimate worship. Crying out, Abba, Father. You know, can you come? Can you come get on these drums for a second, please? Come on, brother. And uh, will you come back to that, that piano there? I want, I want to show you what you got. I want you to know what's living on the inside of you. I want you to know that you got a band. You got man, you got Ben on the drums. Well, I'm sorry, Ben. I love you, man. But you got Holy Spirit drums living inside of you. Why don't we all stand to our feet? Huh? Give me something. I don't care what it is. Strike a few keys. Too long, but all of a sudden. 